It's with great pleasure that we lift up your name. And oh God, take over. Rule and reign. Because it's never about us, always about you. And we give you all honor, all glory, and all praise. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. This morning we're going to talk about the battlefield of the mind. But there's something. There's something going on right now. In your mind. In your mind right now. Can you focus on love? Can I get you? Each and every last one of you in this room. Focus on love. What does love mean to you? Focus on it for a moment. How important is love to you? How is it with you when you see your loved ones? Is there joy? How about the fact that someone you know may have been sick but got delivered? Is there a joy? Focus on love. And the reason why I said focus on that spirit of love because it's so important. Because what is God? And so if God is love, we need to get this in tune with him. We need to stay in tune with him so we can be able to love the way he told us to love unconditionally. But it's so hard. And the reason why it's so hard because from the time you were born, from the cradle until now, your mind has always been under attack. Your mind will continue to come. Why? Because there's so many things going on in the world today that's going to try and knock you off kilter. Keep your focus away. You know, God gave me something. Go to Psalms 139. God gave me something that, that I'm going to mess with the mothers on today. To the mothers, there's a protective spirit that's automatic in women. I'm going to say women because you don't have to be a mother for that protective spirit to jump in. And the reason why I said it like that is because I think about coming up in the neighborhood that we came up in. If you, you could be scared of something, mothers, but let something mess with your child. <laughs> you, could, might, you could look down, you might see there are a couple of guys that don't look too good, look kind of shady, you know, go the opposite way, try your best to name and get it involved or whatever, but let them mess with your child. Let someone put their hands on your child, they ain't had no business putting their hands on, or slap that little one, and you saw. Now the thing about it is this, yeah, we love the Lord, yes, but you put your hands on my child. And there's something about, something kicks in, when your hands has been put on that little one, or maybe even that old one. There's a reason why I'm going here with this. Okay, because when that mechanism clicks, what's the first thing to come up, mamas? Aunties, grandma. You know, grandma might never be able to walk too well, but if she got a stick, she's gonna use it. She's gonna use that stick because you put your hands on mine. It's something about that protective or the spirit that's in you women, as men too, but I'm just freaking on the women right now. The thing is, is, it could be your husband, it could be your brother. You know, you could have argued over and over with someone until they all of a sudden, now, you just hurt mine. What do you do? You got a chance, you got a weapon right there, or you're gonna just watch somebody jump your child. You got a weapon handy, I'm not talking about the word either. You got a weapon handy, this is the reason why I'm going here, just bear with me. But somebody put their hands and even they jump your child. And you see them jumping your child. Now most of the time, some of them say, oh, I'm gonna run. Really? If it's yours? I'm gonna go back to, it's been about 20 years now, when this happened. This one made me say, oops, I got the right one. I realized that when, Lawrence and Lauren did not know how to ride a bike. We were teaching them, taking them to a school to teach them how to ride a bike. We had to walk to get there because, again, they didn't know how to get on. We were walking with their bikes, and somebody left the gate open. And there was about four or five dogs that was in that gate, and they came out. We were across the street, but they came towards my children, our children. And the first thing I thought about, uh-uh. Now, mind you, I jumped, grabbed my bike, and I'm going to ready to throw them. I'm ready to protect. And I'm jumping in front. And I'm just going, ha! And the dogs still kept coming. But it was something about Serena. 
When she picked that back up and she said, I threw the bike at them dogs, they all turned and went back in. The <laughs> they all went back. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm standing here with mine. They ain't paying no mind to me. But she said, you threw the bike at them, and boom, went back up in the yard. I'm like, huh? Even somebody up on the bottom said, man, you see that? I said, you know what's happening? It's something about you women. When that protective thing just jumps up on the inside of you. Now, what does that have to do with my mind? I'm going to tell you. Now, men, I want y'all to pay close attention to this. You see, another time, somebody put their hands on a child with my brother. When we were young, we were in the valley. That's the first time I saw my mother get angry. And she really got angry when somebody, and she looked, she said, hold up. When she grabbed that stick to you. I'm ready to go to work because they put their hands, and I believe it was you, as a matter of fact. <laughs> but this other girl was like, get ready to like this. She wanted to do something. And to my eye, you ain't gonna do this, you ain't gonna do this. This mountain. But then all of a sudden, because these Valley Green moms, and then you know, you, you mess up, you get whooped by this yeah, one. Yeah. And then you come home, you get whooped by your mama too. So now, here we go. And the Valley Green who's just mumbling. Jumped on my mother's side, ready to go after this guy who put his hands on her child. I'm looking like, okay, you know where all this comes from? I tell you what, I just need you to understand how important it is. See, you, your love for your child make you give your life up. Your love for your child make you forget about what you're going through. Your love for your child make you do some things. So, with that being said, because of the love that I remember the testimony being given, both praying for your daughter when she was in the service and then overseas, and Dr. Betty went in prayer, and that's when I, I don't know which one it was, said that all of a sudden the enemy saw people standing up around her daughter. So that was no one but God who got the angels and camped around them. And see, God has shown himself mighty. God has shown himself powerful. God has shown himself strong. So with that same tenacity that you can use in the physical, I need you to focus and put it in the natural and start rebuking the enemy when he comes to test and try your mind. Why? Because it's important because when you look around you, everything is being compromised. Everything that's going on in the world today, there's no love in it. There's more sin in it than love. We must maintain a mindset that Jesus Christ rules. And Psalms 139, verse 23 and 24, it gives us a pathway to freedom from some of the things that's been holding us back. Amen? Search me, O God, and know my heart. I love you, Lord, you say. We say it all the time. I love the Lord. But what does your mind do when you're trying to worship him? What does your mind do when you really say, I love you? Think about the battle that you start to fight. Because the moment you glorify him, something comes from out of nowhere. You ever notice that? You ever notice something come out of nowhere that make you say, what was I thinking about? Have you ever gotten to a moment, I can't remember what I was thinking about? Or you just forgot? But the Holy Spirit's job is to bring everything back to remembrance. It's just that we fail to ask. Holy Spirit, what was I thinking about? Why he wants us to depend on him anyway. Holy Spirit, what should I do this moment? You know what? I was thinking about something. Well, who's that person, man? Instead of just saying, stop wondering and just say, Lord, help me. Stop wondering and just ask him for his help. That's his job. Because if I've got the mindset of him, then my main focus is on him. And he'll bring everything. There's no such thing as you get to a certain age, you, you know, your mind goes. No, stop saying that lie. Don't let the world give you that lie. Because I've never read that in the Bible. But what I have read is this. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. 24. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Ask yourself. As my pattern of thinking kept me from receiving, receiving the benefits that God has in store for me. Has your pattern of thinking, the reason why I said that was because a lot of time I've heard so many, even in the body of Christ, said, well, you know, this ain't going to never happen. Or, you know, I'm never going to get this. I'm never going to have that. 
You know, stop selling yourself short. Stop allowing the enemy to make you think you're less than. How many times you wanted to do something you just didn't? Because when you look in your bank account, you don't see anything in it. Well, you know what? You start off by sowing a seed. And see, when you sow that seed, we don't know when the crop was going to come up, but you've got to sow that seed, cover that seed, and water that seed, and then keep it going. Stay faithful. Stay faithful. Continue to go, 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 go. And don't ever give up. When the mind is totally set and eventual, now this is a vengeful mode, how hard is it for you to come out of it? Because when you're in a vengeful, you know somebody just offended you. Now your mind makes you think worse of them than what it really is. But that vengeful mode keeps you from praising God as well. See, for as a man thinketh, is that what the word said? For as a man thinketh, in his heart, so is he. If you think you are less than, you will be. If you think you will never be successful, you won't be. Why? Because you're thinking it. If you think, oh, Lord, have mercy. I got another one. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you think you can't get the woman of your dreams, you're lying to yourself because you're allowing that lie to get in me. I think of the goodness of God. You're singing of the goodness of God. I think of all the time Pastor preached. Oh, my God, I'm thinking out of the ordinary. Getting out of the ordinary. Stop being so paradigmish. That's my word. When you put yourself in doing the same thing over and over again, thinking you'll get something different, you're in a paradigm. But your mind, you have to fight within your mind. The same way you will fight for your child. If that child was in danger, you know, mothers have gone and burned the buildings and pulled their child out. There's songs sung about it, where the, the little child come out, didn't want to be around the mother. Why? Because she had burns. But those burns were because I was protecting your face. And she brought her, her child out. There's us men, you were always going to love your mama. No matter what. No matter how bad we may have been. Mama never give up on you. I heard it said one time that if dad threw you out the door, mama would sneak it over up the window and let you in. Just something about that, mothers. But you know what? I've seen aunties. Ah, Lord have mercy. They're like they with their siblings as well. To God be the glory. Did you finish that? Now, I start off because I want you to think about the spirit of love. How much you love your child here in the physical. No matter what the age and what's going on, how much you love your child. That baby who came out of your womb, no matter how bad they might be acting now. The key is don't talk about what you see. But we look not on the things that are seen. We look on the things that are unseen. I remember, I got to call you out, Doc. Please forgive me. I love you, dearly. But I remember her saying, my son will not play for the world. My son and her son still here in church. Still giving God the glory. When I heard that, I said, oh no. She said, I'm never giving up. I said, oh, thank you. That was an example that I needed. Pam gave me some scriptures one time that one could, my kids were going through some stuff and she didn't know, but she was giving me scriptures. And I started reading them and I said, wait a minute. So therefore, those five will never ever worry about their dad turning his back. The key is, mothers, uncles, cousins, brothers, don't turn your back on your children because that's what your mind said, look what they're doing right now. No, don't worry about what they're doing right now. Start speaking what you want them to see, which means it's got to back up with the word. My youngest child, I say, hey man, just all the time. Eventually it's going to happen. In my time, I don't know, but it's going to happen. Why? Because we call those things that as though we need to speak it right now. So I'm going to go a step further because I keep seeing these seats filled with my OCC babies. Now I know I've, I've looked at some messages I've done it many times bringing that up. You know why? Don't ever get discouraged. That's one good thing about our God. We can petition him day and night, round the clock. We can keep on standing on his word until the word comes forth. It's going to come to fruition. Why? Because the seed has been planted. And since the seed has been planted, the enemy wants you to stop. 
They didn't want you to give up. But no, I want to see my babies, praise the God. I want to see, I want to, and I hope you touch and agree with me. Don't ever, ever let somebody else put a negativity on your family, on your children. I don't hang around people who want to talk bad about anybody. Why? Get away from me. When I was a baby in Christ, somebody said some ill will against my pastors. I had they were close friends. We were. I had to separate myself from them. Because you can, if you can't uplift, you need to get away from me. Because it's all about uplifting, not putting down. Up, God is an uplifting God. Am I correct? Has he ever put us down? Has he ever turned his back? Look at the shame that Jesus took, yet he didn't stop and ignore the cross. He didn't turn away from that cross. He still went to the cross. Why? Because he knew that one day, Lawrence Gilbert was going to get saved. He knew that one day, Ronald Lakin was going to get saved. He knew, Ted. I may not have seen it. Lord knows I didn't. <laughs> I, <laughs> Jesus, make you want to speak in tongues, thinking about it. But the thing is this, love. We have to learn to love God so much. Get that up here. Get it through here. I don't care who you mad at. What your job might not be the best job. Your boss ain't gave you raise and who knows how long. Get away from that. Get away from the cares of the world. Yeah. That battlefield in your mind has to be one that you, you understand. You've already won. It's just the enemy trying to knock you off. Right. You see in John 10 and 10 said the thief coming not by four to we're going to try to kill your hopes and your dreams. And so he can steal your life away from you, keep you from doing what you're supposed to do, and that way you, if he destroys you, you can't pray for your family to get filled. Uh -huh. That's right. You can't pray for your family to be delivered. You won't see them prosperous. Why? Because you've given up. That's what the thief do. But what's the back side of that? The, the better part of that scripture says, but I am come. Oh, I don't think about it. He said, but I am come. That you will have what? How? So if I'm going to have life more abundantly, should not I trust in that? Yeah. Not only that, should not I trust in my prayers? Should not I get my mind fixed on how much my household is delivered? Not will be, is delivered. Yeah. How much that my grands are going to be victorious? Those who have grown grandchildren, how victorious they are? Hey, the same way, all you do is have that vision. Same like my Christ mind, because on the cross, mm -hmm. he had to be in pain. He had to be hurt on that cross. And yet, before he even gave up the ghost, he gave up the ghost. Before he gave it up, another soul got saved. Yeah. One was in denial, but there was another who was determined, will you take them with you? His feet were hurting, hands were hurting. Everything was hurting. He had a crown of thorn on his head. And some of y'all can't come to church because you got a sniffle. But your mind, the battlefield of your mind, makes you say, I, I want to lose weight, I want to exercise, I want to do this, but the thing is, is take it every moment at a time. And stop trying to rush. Not everybody can lift 100 pounds. Not everybody can run 10 miles. Not everyone can do that. So do me one favor and take your mind to a point where you say, one step. At a time. If that's good, okay. Then the next time, two step. You know, it used to be a dance called a two step, right? So, one step at a time. This battlefield is there because so many times you go to the doctor, you get diagnosed with something, and you believe it instead of rebuking it. And I'm not knocking. Please don't think I'm knocking it, no. But it's time, should not we put God on the wall and he said, prove me here with. The word says, prove me. What's wrong, OCC? Is he not good? Yes, he is. Wouldn't you love to see all your babies up and praising and glorifying God? Wouldn't you love to see that? Yes. Lord, I'm not, can I call his name? I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him. Who am I going to call? Can I call his name? Can I call him? Y'all supposed to know who I'm talking about. Whose name can I call? Oh, y'all don't even believe it. Y'all so weak. Whose name are you going to call? Jesus, folks. Please, somebody say Jesus. Jesus, Jesus I ain't talking calling your child name. Not that for you to do. But I can tell you this much. If you love him, you speak life over him. 
I speak life over my kids, over my grandkids. I'm not going to accept you call. I stop many persons coming and talking about what my children put on Facebook. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> you know, okay, I don't need that report. Whose report will you believe? All right. I know what the Bible says. And he promised to save my entire household. I'm going to stand on that. Because this is the whole deal. And I can truly say this. I see my OCC babies in the street sometimes. But Lord, I'm going to call this name. I was on the subway. I heard a boom, 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 boom. This banging. Couldn't turn around trying to figure what it was. I'm on the opposite track. I look over. Little Wendell was banging on the window on the other side of the track on the subway. And just doing like that to me. And I'm sitting there saying, and he just, he, just, he was excited. Do y'all know how good that felt? He was excited to see, I'm just on the track. And I'm like, did that, you know, let him know. That's love. Because I'm not here to judge him. I'm not his judge. I'm here to love him and love the hell out of him and the rest of him. Why aren't we on one accord in this whole matter? Keep our kids lifted up. Pray he one for another that you may be healed. Why not believe it? I don't care how bad they have lived, but speak of how they're going to be living. The past, the past, let's speak up and bring the future. Believe in my faith, for our households be totally free. Mamas, daddies, come on, Father. Do not give up. Uncles, do not give up. Big brother, little brother, do not give up on your family. Why? Because what was there before there was a church? It was a family. Y'all, y'all so scared to say something? Y'all so scared to answer? God wants to hear you. He wants you to call on him. He wants us, he wants us to depend on him because he don't depend on us. We ought to rely everything on the Lord. It ain't going to hurt you to ask the Holy Spirit what the word name you might have to, those who got four closet fools, y'all need to ask him what the way. <laughs> you know, uh, women, I said, I'm going to mess with you. Let me tell you the closet shelf and fail with you remember. <laughs> okay. Second Corinthians 10. Second Corinthians 10. See, our minds will take us places we don't want to be in. Have you ever thought of a situation that's going to happen? Your mind will put you in the negativity about that whole meeting and stuff like that. You get in that, that meeting, it's nothing like what you thought it was going to be. It turns out to be a blessing, but your mind told you it's going to be something else. You went in there with your guards up like you're ready to run. And the thing is, that's not why God called that meeting to be. But he keeps telling us, when it comes to him, we don't have to throw our guards up. When it comes to him, because he will fight our battles. When it comes to him, I don't need somebody to watch my back because he got it. When it comes to him, so in your mind, make your mind up. You keep saying, for God I live, for God I die. In your mind, I need to read the word more. In your mind, keep this in your thick skull. Because the thing is this, we don't need no needles to penetrate. The word will do enough. We have to learn to appreciate what we see in the word. Not what you see in your children. But we look not on the things that are seen. Because the things that are seen is temp- if it's temporal, that means it's just temporary that they're acting out. But the things that are eternal, which means we get that thing out of them. Because while we got one can chase a thousand, two can put ten thousand flesh, we can stand in agreement, we can pray together, we can believe together for our family, and them demons come off our children, and our children will be praising and glorifying God. So when we all get up in heaven, I said, when we all get up in heaven, but then God say also we can have heaven. Wouldn't it be heavenly to see your babies all over the place? When it didn't have it, I remember many days the, the word couldn't go forth. Dr. Bennett's in a praise. And I wonder if she could be in the park and she looked up and see all the OCC babies coming in and they getting in the spirit and jumping around. What would it do to you, Cornell? To see yours. Because I know if I see mine, if I see yours, I'm going to jump. Why? Because I love all my babies. Yes, my babies. I thank God he had me, gave me the opportunity to teach children's church like I did, and I still check in when I see them. 
Why? Because I'm not going to look on what I see. I'm going to look what the word tells me to say to them. And how the word says to do such and such, and such for them. Whatever the word gives me at that time. But I need you to touch and agree. When two touch and agree, he said what? I just got to get in your mind to understand, please, please understand how important it is to pray for our families, our kids. Do you know how bad it is when you got these babies listening to this ungodly music? You, they're listening to it. They're listening to all that stuff, calling the N-word and all those things, calling the bees and all that stuff. They're listening to it. You know what? Because our younger generation has got outside of us. And they're letting all this stuff happen. Why? Because this is the way of the world. But we who have overcome the world. Uh -huh. We are overcomers. And since we are overcomers, we need to take this battle where it's supposed to be. What is your best battle condition, position? Where? So if it is, and those who can't bend, sit in your chair. Amen. If you can't get on the floor, lay, when you get in the bed, lay flat on the bed. And then give God, you have to do it. Why? Now is the appointed time. Yeah. Now, we've done it, we wasted enough time. Now, if the battlefield that goes on your head is tell you that your child will never be nothing, you better pray until you can't pray no more. Mm -hmm. You better pray until you're exhausted. Because when you exhaust them, we, we don't understand how important it is. God put up with me all these years. God got me to this point. But I do believe, because I can't seem to shake it, I do believe that's where I'm supposed to be. And I don't want to shake it until I start seeing some results. And when, the reason why I say it that way is because if Peter's shadow healed me, and Peter got results, and Jesus in the Word, I have to say it again, Lord, thank you. Greater works we would do. So greater works we would do. I thought about when I was at work and an employee, co-worker came by and I'm sitting in my office with the supervisor, assistant supervisor, and the three of us were leaning back and she walked in there and just started playing the bongos on our stomach. She was I said, that was enough. That prompted me. But, but I'm telling you, that prompted me because at that time I was at 289 pounds. <clears throat> I ain't weighing in that. Amen. It prompted me. I didn't do it over night, but I kept at it. I'm still at it because I'm not at the desired weight I want to be at. But the thing is this that's how I got my start. And it took one step at a time and stopped eating all them Krispy Kreme donuts, too. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> I'm just saying. But you have to do something, even but if you're sitting in a chair, and you know, just do this. Start somewhere, please. Stop letting your mind tell you, I ain't gonna never get there. I, why am I doing this? I'm wasting time. Yeah, that's your mind trying to tell you one thing, but you got control over that mind. You just say, shut up, devil. Leave me alone, Satan. And just do it. Mm -hmm. you know, just do it. Get to a point where you can start crouching and some more stuff. Just do it. This way, if you can do it in your physical man, and get your physical man together. Ah, I wonder what you can do with your spiritual man, the real you. And when the real you is working on the outside you, because the inside you should be controlling what's going on with the outside you, and the inside you is controlling what's going on the outside of you, then you're going to start seeing some results. We look not on the things that are seen. The things that are seen is temporal. But the things that are not seen are eternal. Isn't that what we're working for? Isn't that what we're going through this for? For our, to get our place in eternity? So, I don't know what I told you to go ahead, but you know what? Holy Spirit, let's give me something else. Please, y'all, let's get back to love. How good it is just to be in love. How good it is to feel love. You know, those of you who may be single want to be loved. Those of you who've been single for a long time really want to be loved. You might be lonely, but you just want to be loved. And the thing is this, if you can learn to close your eyes and just picture heaven, can they get you to try and love up on what heaven is all about? You see, in the physical man, it's easy to love. I, I have a lot to be thankful for. <laughs> I have to be thankful. 
thankful for. Come to love. What about you? Is that your mother back there? You love them? Well, can you pray for them? I don't know my answers. <laughs> it's a reason why. I'm trying to get it to, if you can see this in the physical, what we need to do in the natural, what we need to do in the spiritual, understand we're putting them two together because there's a lot to this battlefield and this mind because it's, you know, whew, the teachings that we have received. Lord Jesus, I'm thankful because I had a prayer one time for the pastor to do something that was out of character for him, and he did it. And what I meant when I said out of character because, you know, we men, you know, we macho, you know. But I just said, Lord, I just need him just to give me a hug. That's all I asked for. I prayed and asked him. And we had a conversation because I was playing, I was staggering the fence. I didn't know. I was, wasn't exactly sure what I want. One was that triple woman. I was not faithful coming to church or nothing, but I just was like, I went visiting other churches and all of that, but I just wasn't whole. And I asked the Lord, I just need one thing. And if you can get him to hug me, I know the OCC is my home. And guess what? I happened to come, I was outside that door. He was standing there. And I said, I got you. I was just standing and saying something to you. You know, he said, I said, Pastor, I told him, I, you know, just told him a few things. And he said, come in. So I walked up to him. He put his arms around me and gave me a hug. So he let me know God answers my prayers. I said, why? You know, so he says, I'm back. I ain't calling him. I remember all those things for a reason. If at my young stage then, it got me to listen and to stop playing church. I mean, stop playing church or playing around church. It taught me to be faithful in Church. I got a whole lot more, but he gave me one minute sign. <laughs> and I'm going to say this just for you to focus on love. Because I knew also when Dr. Bailey looked at me one time, like my mama did, and I started snitching on myself. Because <laughs> I couldn't lie to my mom, bro. I said, well, Dr. I didn't mean to do that. And she was looking at me. I wasn't going to ask you that question. But see, when my mom went, she gave me a look that my mother gave me, I started snitching on me. I told her everything. That's why I ain't going to try my, I'm going to try my best to just stay obedient. I'm wrong? I was our mother's most obedient child, so give God a good. I'm going to go out there. <laughs> Lord, we give you honor, glory, and all praise for the opportunity to have brought the world forth the word. I'm praying, oh God, that we didn't get out of your grace. I mean, didn't get out of your will. We're going to stay in the will of you. And Father, there's someone here. While the altar is open, Lord, they will take it upon themselves to call upon you. If they don't know you, they were backsliding. No one needs to be concerned other than the fact that them coming to the altar and giving their praise unto you, praying to you, asking to be cleansed, asking for you to take over their mind. We all should be praying.